Good afternoon. Did you know that between 1966 and 1972, Zambia had more jobs than the available manpower? 472,000 jobs were created in five years against the target of 200,000 jobs here in our country. To bridge this gap, did you know that the NIP government came up with a robust manpower development program which saw the placement of young people who are dropping out of school, including others who didn't have the chance to go to school but they were trainable. They could do odd jobs and other skills-based uh, you know, jobs where they are taught practical skills. And all these were placed under government manpower development programs across industry. The manpower development program, for the sake of our young people, we may not understand what this means. It meant that school dropouts, as long as they were trainable, and employed labor, as long as that labor was trainable, were placed on what was called job on training. They were getting the paycheck, were being trained on the job. Because of this, income levels increased as well as the witnessing in our country of the emergency of the middle class. That's how it, it grew. And it was this middle class which began to provide for families uh, in the villages because the dependence ratio in our country is very high. We in the UPP are propose the scrapping of of the Citizens Employment Economic Commission, CEC, which has failed to accelerate industrial development in our country or to create jobs for young people. What we have seen through the creation of centralized state corporations is the breeding of corruption. Because the same people who are policymakers, they are the same ones who get who access those funds, who get that financing, and they give to those who are in their inner circle. And because of this, Taxpayers, the people of Zambia, young people, continuously get shunted out of the mainstream economy of their own country. When the scrap of the CEC, we in the UPP propose to create county departments of commerce, that is, departments of commerce at district level. And from the beginning, each department of commerce must undertake what is called a skills inventory survey to identify the many young people not in employment and, and, and also categorize them according to the skills that they have acquired. The majority have degrees, they have certificates, diplomas, and yet they have no jobs, they are roaming our streets. For the first time in the history of, in the history of Zambia, there is this new phenomenon where doctors who have graduated have no jobs, nurses, you know, teachers, across sectors. So with this skills inventory program in place at district level, to where resources are going to be sent, right where these young people are across Zambia, it will be possible and easier to let these young people be placed in their own small and medium enterprises, which are going to be essential and critical in job creation. Young people, in other words, are going to be job creators for themselves. Backed up, in terms of backing up this, this will be backed by, shall I say, this will be backed by a policy of giving contracts to local Zambian companies. It is unthinkable that we give huge contracts in the construction sector to foreign corporations and we see our leaders proudly saying that 20% will be given to local companies. This is laughable. This will change. We'll scrap off that policy. We in the UPP will instead prioritize youth-led enterprises to be the first to get these contracts. The people of Zambia cannot afford to build schools, they can't afford to build hospitals, they can't afford to do roads, we have engineers. And after all, when these foreign companies are given projects in the construction sector, they get Zambian consultants. This will change. It's Zambians who must be contractors. If they need consultants, then we can go to foreigners to come and do consulting in our country. This is the only way that we are going to create jobs in our country. Jobs, jobs, nothing else but jobs for young people. Thank you. God bless you.